So the British sent an appeal to this man, Giovanni Belzoni, the eccentric explorer who worked for the British consul in Egypt, tracking down artifacts. It was said that if the missing piece was found, it would be worth its weight in diamonds. And if there was anyone who could find it, it was Belzoni, a man who had a gift for discovering Egypt's ancient past. It was the opportunity Champollion had been waiting for all his life. He arrived in Paris to study oriental languages with the country's leading linguist, Sassi, a man who'd struggled with the mystery of the hieroglyphs with little success. Today, you will begin your attempt to learn Persian. A language steeped in the rich culture, yes, Monsieur Latoin. Will we be studying hieroglyphs during our time here? No. I can see no good reason to study a script about which so little is known. The English are trying to translate them. I'm well aware of Mr. Young's achievements in England, thank you. Perhaps if we studied them, we could beat him. Hieroglyphs are symbols, the embodiment of an idea. Translating them is a task so monumentally difficult that it would take a lifetime, if indeed it could be achieved at all. Now, if there are no other questions, what is it, Monsieur Champollion? Are you sure hieroglyphs are just symbols and not words and letters? Oh, you're saying I'm wrong, along with every other classical scholar from antiquity. Here you are, Monsieur Champollion. Enlightenment. What does that hieroglyph mean? I don't know. Well, let's pursue something that we do know, shall we? Gentlemen, open your Persian grammars at chapter one. So, what exactly do you wish to achieve here? The origins of the world. That's what's fascinated me ever since I was a boy. That's a worthy subject. When I first learned Latin, I thought that would help. But I prefer the Greek version of the Bible, don't you? Then that didn't provide the answer, so I turned to Hebrew. I'd like to tackle Aramaic while I'm here. Can you imagine actually speaking the same language as our Lord? I can. And I do, by the way. <sighs> there are so many questions I've always wanted to answer. What language did Adam speak? Which is the oldest race in the world? And if Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, why are they not in Egyptian, his native tongue? I'm not sure that's something we need to question. I know I can discover all the answers if I can just translate hieroglyphs. Really? How interesting. This is interesting. Have you got any word that crops up 24 times? It's not enough to be and or the. Uh -huh. It's got to be something else. Oh. I got king in the Greek, Basilius, 23 times. Right. Basilius, I'm marking that as a possible. Mm. The next word occurs 14 times. Oh. Well, Ptolemy crops up 11 times. It could be the closest. Yes. Yes, this is promising. Ptolemaeus. Mm. Excellent. More fun than you expected. Well, it is if you've drunk enough port. Any more in there? <clears throat> Young treated the hieroglyphs as a code to be broken, using the sheer power of logic and numerical analysis. Surely, he felt, if he applied his brilliant mind for long enough, the deeds the pharaohs described on the walls of their temples would at last ring out loudly again. 
But Champollion took a completely different approach to these ancient inscriptions. As a linguist, he was determined to find the meaning of the hieroglyphs through the study of the ancient languages of Egypt. Champollion was becoming convinced that the hieroglyphs made words, and words had to be spoken. So he began to study the last known language spoken during the time of the hieroglyphs. Coptic, the language of the Egyptian Christians. Coptic was still spoken in the churches of Coptic Christians, including one in Paris. Could this be the sound of the pharaohs? If only Champollion could match these sounds to the hieroglyphs, perhaps he might hear the pharaohs speak. Well, son. Well, son. Lavoy, la, lavoy, lavoy, me, 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 uh, me, 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 me. What on earth are you doing? <laughs> Jack Joseph, how oh, wonderful to see you. I didn't expect to see you so soon. <laughs> Clearly. What was that noise? Uh, there are four Coptic names for a lion. Actually, strictly speaking, lavoy means lioness. <clears throat> Coptic? Yes, the closest living language to common Egyptian. The language spoken by the Egyptians around the time of Cleopatra and Alexander the Great. And I found a church where they say mass in Coptic right here in Paris. And the priest is teaching me. Just what you need. Another language. Don't mock. This could be the key to everything. What on earth have you done to your britches? Oh, yes, I, I tore them on my first week. Never mind, it doesn't matter. Take them off, give them to me. Do you have a needle and thread? Suppose the scripts of the stone are related. Have you thought of that? What if the hieroglyphs are just an older version of the common Egyptian? Look. It's here somewhere. Oh. Take this sign from the common Egyptian. Do you think it looks a bit like this hieroglyph? A little. Don't you see what I'm saying? If the hieroglyphs are connected to common Egyptian, they're the script of a language, not vague mystical symbols. Interesting theory. And you think this Coptic will help? Or maybe. If I can use it to work out common Egyptian. Test me. Go on. I'm pretty good. Ask me to name anything. All right. Chair. Say. Table. Sokji. Bed. Lol. <laughs> I can't see much else. Ah, sun. Ray, it's my favorite. You just love that sound. Ray. Stop showing off. 